Gentlemen and the very few ladies, uh, good morning. It's a privilege to be here among US team folks. Um, well, I'm also going to be talking about a little bit of technology. Uh, and before that, you know, I must thank Shubhankar Shilpi and all for having me here. So to start off, uh, my objective is to talk about e-commerce and uh, IoT, or e-commerce in the sense supply chain also, and the Internet of Things, and how they're enmeshed. My wife works in the e-commerce space, and uh, she stays far away from the Internet of Things or anything to do with MTM. Probably because I'm there, uh, but it's also because of this belief that you know, e-commerce, supply chain, etc., really don't need this Internet of Things. So this is the uh, 100th year of the general theory of relativity. So I'm going to talk about it from that, pers from that perspective, how, you know, sp like how space and time before that were considered completely unique, completely independent. But after Einstein, after, two, after 1915, uh, they realized that space and time are pretty much part of the same thing. It's, I would believe that going forward, everybody will assume, everybody will know that e-commerce and IoT, in fact, to some extent, even supply chain are pretty much part of the same thing. They're an extension of the same thing. But I'm going to start off with something radically different, take a fun aspect of it. So you all heard of the term cybernetics. Well, I heard of the term for the very first time in this movie. In the Terminator 2, 1991, I must have been in my high school. And when I heard of the term cybernetics, it, I thought it was extremely futuristic. You know, this is where, this is a word for the future, this is what I should look at, and this is what, uh, you know, uh, we should be looking at. But this, nothing could be further from the truth. Cybernetics is not a very futuristic word. In fact, its roots are in an ancient Greek word called steer, to navigate, to govern. And anybody wants to hazard a guess when the first recorded usage of the word cybernetics was? Anybody want to hazard a guess? The first recorded usage of this word was in, 90, in 350 BC by Plato in his book called Alcibiades. He used it to refer to the study of self-governance. Now self-governance, why self-governance? As, as simple as that. But in the context of us, the way we use it in, in technology, in, in automated systems, etc., was coined, was coined by this gentleman, again in 1948. So not a really new word at all. Extremely old words. Where am I going with this? So self-regulatory systems, automated systems, they're all systems which require feedback loop, which is what smart systems are all about. The earliest, just to give you a little history, the earliest automated system is as old as 250 BC, it's a water clock. As the water goes in, the dial goes up, and after a particular point in time, the water goes out, 24 hours later, the dial goes back. Automated system. Uh, the automated system in, in the technology, in the industrial age, is, the, is the, the, the steam engine by James Watt. A little further in the electronic age, you have the negative feedback amplifier, and going forward, you have metamaterials, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. But why am I talking about this? It is automation. I mean, we are talking about the history of automation. We're talking about automation in marketing, and we're talking about automation in the supply chain. This is Johnny Walker's uh, smart bottle, as they say. Uh, it is, this is the sensor that is there, as you can see. That's a pretty much, that's all there is to it. It's a sensor. It's as thin as, it's a printed sensor. Now, what, what does this do? It's got NFC on one side, which is what you know, a lot of technologies, which a lot of gentlemen have spoken before me. It's got a near field communication on one side, and it's got Wi Fi on the other. You tap the phone or your instrument on that bottle, and it'll probably send you messages relevant to where the bottle is, whether it's in the showroom, whether it's in your house, etc. It doesn't need a battery. It doesn't need a battery. It, it draws strength from the Wi Fi signals that it utilizes, it runs on. And the cost, it's tens of cents, it's a few rupees. Now, not only can it do marketing, it's also an effective tool in the supply chain. Where are Johnny Walker bottles usually bought? In the airports. From the airports, you buy it in Dubai, it goes pretty much all around the world. Now, where, how, how is it that Johnny Walker can know where do I set up my next distribution center? Where do I set up my next, you know, its next supply chain? It is by virtue of these stickers. It's not just automation in marketing. It's pretty much going far ahead in the supply chain. So that is marketing automation along with a little supply chain. Now I talk about automation and replenishment. Well, pretty much semi-automated replenishment. These are Amazon's dash buttons. 
It's got a product logo. It's a small size of chewing gum thing. It's got a product logo. And um, the product logo is tied, et cetera, as you can see over here. You take this, stick it up to wherever it is that you want, pretty much on your washing machine. That's the example I've shown there. When the product goes you know, below a certain quantity, you press the button, and you know, it identifies you by virtue of you being a number and your address that is already configured. Just press the button, and this particular product will be delivered to your doorstep. It's semi-automated replenishment. Going forward, obviously, you can imagine how they're going next. It's, it'll be automated replenishment. You don't need to press the button at all. You will be able to replenish things automatically. Marry the sticker that you saw on the Johnny Walker bottle to know the level of the quantity of liquid and integrate it with something like this. It's automated replenishment. Smart vending machines. Already here, I mean, I've spoken to a lot of people who are implementing these systems. You can pretty much do product fill levels, no product fill levels, which, which product is it that I need to replenish, you know, your door alarm. Yeah, these are all sensors. A lot of my, Mr. Bhargav spoke about, so did Mr. Mittal, spoke about different kinds of sensors. These sensors will pass along this information using various means. Temperature sensors, temperatures are going beyond, 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 below a particular point, temperature sensors. So these are examples of systems that pretty much do supply chain at some level or the other. So going forward, where do, where do I see four areas where e-commerce supply chain will be deeply enmeshed? One is obviously you know, the inventory management system. This is the entire supply chain of a food management, of, of, of the food's life cycle, right from sourcing of the food to you know, putting it on the table. But most important, uh, the takeaway that I want you all to do from here is something called cost per touch. IKEA believes in this philosophy called cost per touch. It means that every human that touches any product along the life cycle increases the cost. You reduce your cost per touch and you will be able to get, generate better profits. Your top line will be far better, not only your bottom line. Fleet management. Uh, well, again, this is part of M2M. So whatever we have heard earlier, I'm just applying it here. You know your, you know, where, not only do you know where the vehicle is, you also know at what speed it is going, you know whether the door is open, you know your temperature inside the vehicle, you know the acceleration, you know whether the driver is actually doing well or not. Uh, something went wrong, is it because of the driver, is it because that product actually went wrong, something went wrong with the product. I was talking to Mr. Hardayal and he was telling me about contamination. You will know if something like that goes wrong. Marry that with after sales and service, after sales service warranty. I, I mean, something went wrong. Was it because of this? Was it because the door was opened? Was it because something else happened? These sensors will be able to tell you that. Insurance company says, no, I don't want to pay because it's, it is the driver's fault. You will be able to you know, gauge that. You will be able to maintain up-to-date configurations. You will be able to do better maintenance. Uh, the drivers, I mean, there is a driver that is driving bad. I mean, I drive bad. Maybe my wife drives very well. Maybe some of my friends drive very well. Why would I pay the same amount of insurance? I mean, why would the insurance company take the same amount of money from me as, as from the other person who drives well? You'd probably charge me more. So all of these are possibilities in, in the supply chains. Uh, you know, the folks before me spoke about supply chain analytics. Supply chain analytics is a huge, uh, huge, huge area, but you can't do without gathering data in real time. You talk about predictive analysis, you talk about predictive maintenance, you talk about prediction of any of your supply chain, uh, you talk about prescription. You know, something's going to happen into the future, you can analyze. And you can even offer a particular solution. I mean, there's going to be uh, rain in the, in the next couple of days. Stock up on something. Stock up, because that's where the market is. That's where, do your real-time inventory. So this is, these are all the solutions that we offer. I won't talk about it, but my company offers, it's a startup, again. Uh, we offer solutions for cities, for industries, and for consumers. Uh, this is the plethora of services we offer. I won't get into it for your own sake. We'll talk about it later off. So this is the, to summarize, the e-commerce supply chain IoT continuum. You know, when Einstein spoke about general relativity, he actually said, the faster you go, you know, your, your time goes slower. And it is not just to do, in a, you know, in a very abstract manner. Two researchers actually took a, a cesium beam atomic clock in a, in a Pan American plane and flew it around the world and compared it with the time on a stationary clock on the ground. And they found that the time actually elapsed slowly on the clock than on the ground. So I'm, I'm 
this is the takeaway that I want from, you know, you all that. It's pretty much the case with e-commerce supply chain IoT. The more costs or effort you put in the Internet of Things, in automation, in the IoT, you will reduce your costs in, in, in supply chain operations, in e-commerce operations. This is, uh, the other gentleman spoke about having dabawalas. You need many more like them. You just can't have one. I mean, they, they have a process of getting the persons, you know, down at the core. But unless you have more like them, you really can't. And the way you get more of them is automation. That's it. Thank you for your time. <laughs>